Hello and welcome back to all our viewers to our favorite news bulletin show 7 at 7 only on Stumps and Bales. This is your host Anjali. First off, let's look at India vs West Indies where Aksar Patel helps India to win another thriller by two wickets. At the second one day international of the three match series against West Indies on Sunday at Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad, Aksar Patel 64 not out of 35 balls assisted India in chasing down 312 run mark. With it, India secured an unbeatable 2-0 series lead. For the visitors, West Indies had managed to produce somewhat difficult totally. Having chosen to bat first, the openers got things going quickly, scoring 45 runs in the first six overs. Kyle Mills is a front aggressive batter which allowed Shai Hope to keep the patience. Shamir Brooks also had a good start but like Mills, he was unable to capitalize on it. In his 100th ODI, Shai Hope became the fourth West Indian batter to hit century while Puran also contributed significantly with a crucial performance that featured six maximums. At number 2, we have Sri Lanka vs Pakistan's second test, day 1. As Sri Lanka sped to 315 for 6 on day 1, the openers put up 92 runs together, Dinesh Chandimal struck 80 and Niroshan Dikwela reached stumps on 42 not out. This wasn't a strong or a modest total on the flat gale surface that will take a few days to properly veer. Spinner discovered the turn but not in the swift manner that results in collapses. However, only when the seam was stiff did the quicks detect any movement beneath the surface. It was a good day for batting. In fact, Sri Lanka might be cursing themselves for losing one too many wickets. Next up, we have England vs South Africa ODI series finale washed off. After much thrill and anticipation in the first two ODIs, the third and the final ODI between England and South Africa was cancelled due to heavy rain in Leeds resulting in 1-1 tie in the series standing. Quinton de Kock appeared to be in a fantastic form during the 27.4 overs that could be played in two halves owing to the rain and finished with 92 not out of 76 balls. David Willey, in response, bowled aggressive full lengths in effort to generate some swing after being particularly harsh with him. Adil Rashid and Reese Stockley both had the same therapy. Deacock actually welcomed the leg spinner with back-to-back -back boundaries as he progressed to his 50 of 39 deliveries. On fourth, we have Deacock who recently opened up about his decision to leave the test cricket. Quinton Deacock has no regrets about deciding to give up on the longest format of cricket even though his decision to play in T20 leagues has left a gap in his schedule. Deacock left tests at the end of last year just before he became a father for the first time. He gave the reason that he wanted to spend more time at home, but that dream has not yet materialized. Deacock has said that he will continue to play ODI cricket for the time being, despite many people believing that the format is slowly dying. He also wants South Africa to play more 50 over cricket. Next up, we have New Zealand, which has announced the squad for ODI and T20 series against West Indies. New Zealand cricket has announced the ODI and T20 squad for the upcoming West Indies tour starting on August 10th. The team's regular skipper Kane Williamson is back in the squad and is set to lead the 15-member squad which comprises experienced players. The likes of Martin Guptill, Trent Bolt and Tim Southey will be there in the squad. Moreover, new players including Finn Allen, Michael Bracewell have also cemented their place in the lineup after an impressive series against Ireland. At number 6, we have Virat Kohli who is likely to be part of the ODI squad for Zimbabwe series. After the ongoing white ball series against West Indies, Team India will fly to Zimbabwe Zimbabwe for the three-match ODI series starting on August 18, for which selectors want Virat Kohli to be a part of it. The ex-skipper of Team India is currently struggling with his form as in the recently concluded England series, Kohli only managed to score 12 runs in two T20Is and 33 in the two ODIs. And according to the media reports, selectors and veterans of the game want Virat to play in the series against Zimbabwe to regain his form. Last but not the least, we have European T20 World Cup sub-regional qualifiers beginning in Finland. The 10 teams are competing to join Italy, Denmark and the winners of the first two rounds in the regional finals of massive European T20 World Cup sub-regional qualifiers which began on 24 July in Finland. Favourites Gunzi defeated Bulgaria to get off a strong start in Group 1. Austria who defeated Luxembourg in their opening match and Slovenia 
who will enter the group 1 action tomorrow are also at the top of the table. While the Swiss are yet to play, Norway and France both defeated Estonia and the Czech Republic to take the lead in group 2. That is all for today's news. If you would like to read more on those, go on to our website at www.sumsandbales.com and don't forget to follow all our social medias which will be linked in the description box down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Sums and Bales. Until next time, bye-bye.